Hey guys, welcome back to Sports with Mono and Mono. It's October 14th, 2019, and the gang is all back together again. Steve's here. Hi everybody, welcome back to the show. Glad you guys could join us. So listen, uh, we're going to jump right into some NFL action and so forth. So, But our first segment, of course, is sponsored by Coriano Trucking Incorporated from West Havistro, New York. Loyal sponsor of the show. Thanks, Guy. Thank you, Guy. All right, so listen, we have a Cowboy fan in the room here. So there was a kind of a shocker, as far as I could see. They, they, they come into the Meadowlands, and I had the Cowboys walking out of there, up, winning the game by 35 points, and it didn't happen. What happened? Well, I think our audience knows I try to be objective being a Cowboy fan. However, I felt real good about this, and uh, you know, I even said so with our partner Mitch on Pick Dogs prior to the uh, the game. I actually had two tickets offered to me. I happened to just be up in Rhode Island for the weekend, so in retrospect, I'm kind of glad <laughs> I wasn't uh, present for this. I don't know what to say. I mean, <laughs> you know, the Jets are zero and four. The Cowboys coming off to, you know. Bad losses, yeah, they lost the two good teams, the Saints and the Packers. So I fully expected them to ram it down the Jets' throats. So I get Darnold came back. I thought it was a given. I, I would have given, I would have given, it was only seven points to boot. Yeah, well, it actually got up to nine points, actually, as the, as the uh, you know, prior to the game. I said, I don't care if it's ten points. I like the Cowboys. Exactly. Now, for all our Cowboy fans, and me being one of them, there's this hex out there, this... Uh, the Blue Jersey the hex? The Blue Jersey hex, especially in the Meadowlands. That's kind of funny, because I brought that up yesterday. Well, and somebody said, well, if they were wearing blue jerseys, why would you take them and give them nine points? And I said, I don't believe in hexes. I don't believe in hexes. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> but I started to believe in the first half when uh, Darnold hits uh, Robbie Anderson for, what, 90-plus yards? 92. Right, 92. Longest play in the NFL this right. year. Amari Cooper, oh, my thigh, yeah. uh, et cetera, et cetera. I told you about that. But the bottom line was <laughs> the Jets, you, that. you know, you know, in the first half, Obviously took it to the Cowboys. I said, oh my God, what is going on here? Right, but they didn't take it to the Cowboys because uh, Le'Veon Bell was running for no. 200 yards. It's, he didn't get shit. Because the Cowboys' defense was a sieve, an absolute sieve. And listen, Dak hasn't been playing well. He hasn't been efficient. And I'm not crying wolf. Jason Witten had a touchdown. And, you know, uh, was it, was it, you know, listen, they called it back. I'm not crying wolf here. Point is, I'll, I'll make on this. If there's going to be pass interference, will you please review it, NFL? That being said, that's not an excuse. The Cowboys lost, lost the, the game, game, and I take my medicine. Me too. There's trouble in <laughs> Dallas. We're three and three. All right. Elliott runs for 105 yards, etc. Darnold's a savior, but doesn't it make your skin crawl when a Robbie Anderson catches a 92-yard touchdown pass? My skin is still shedding as we speak 24 <laughs> right? hours later. And I think our fans know what we're talking about yes. here. I'm not going to go into it on the show. But the bottom line is congratulations to the New York Jets. Getting their first win. Yeah. There's trouble in Dallas. We're three and three. Good news was the Eagles uh, got wiped by the Vikings. So, which, which, by the way, and I, again, I must concede, I got to take some medicine here. I, uh, well, I liked the Vikings yesterday. I, 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 I didn't, but I, I took the Eagles. And then I, I got to say, because I from last Monday, I picked the Browns. I thought they would show up in San Francisco, and they got blown out of the building. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> so there's, there's, there's two things with that game, those two teams. Are the 49ers as good as their record is? And are the Cleveland Browns as bad as their record? Their record. What do you think? Well, they, we, we talked about Baker Mayfield. Again, he throws three picks yesterday. So if you want to backtrack to that Monday night debacle, to uh, quote Bill Cowher, debacle. Um, listen, they only scored three points. The Niners, are they for real? Listen, they, 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 the Niners came into the uh, Coliseum, and we'll get to that game in a moment. But the Browns, um, I don't know what to say. Baker Mayfield has not been playing well. I think a lot has to do with 
you see him on TV a lot, you see commercials, you see this, that, and the other thing. I don't know if that's affecting him not concentrating, being a quarterback. I don't know. I mean, I'm just you know, throwing it out there. That Campbell does chunky soup for crap. Yeah, but, he, uh, yeah, but no. he, he doesn't throw three big picks in a game against Seattle yesterday. A home game. After coming off, 31-3 to three ass kicking. I got it. We've talked about the Browns being loaded with groceries. and. But everybody thought they were going to the grocery store and getting filet mignon. Well, they, and, they, and all of a sudden... I think everybody's in agreement that they have the talent. I just don't know what's going on. Listen, they, they've right. just dug themselves a hole. Baker Mayfield has not been playing well. And, you know, they were winning that game. And Russell Wilson, listen, uh, you got two of the biggest Russell Wilson fans on this show. Two of the biggest. And, you know, at this point in the season, Russell Wilson is probably an MVP candidate. You know what? It just doesn't make mistakes. But I had a I had a conversation with somebody today and somebody said, Oh well Russell Wilson this and I go, Russell Wilson wins. He's a winner. He wins. So I, I go you want to talk to me about you you wouldn't bet on you're gonna bet on Andy Dalton before you bet on Russell Wilson? Don't be ridiculous. Of you course. know that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know. But back to the San Francisco 49ers and I wanna to touch on this game. You know, the Niners coming in 5-0 and against a struggling Ram team who obviously was in the Super Bowl last year. We got, again, you and I have talked about Jared Goff. Yep. We're big fans of him. I However, remember. you know, I've been hearing on the other side of people saying, you know what, Goff is overrated, this, that, and the other thing. And I've been defending him. I've you, been defending him. You know, I've time. been a loyal defender of his. Well, I, I tell you what, watching yesterday's game, I don't know what's going on with the Rams. I don't know what's going on with Goff. I get Gurley is hurt. But Jared Goff looked ridiculous. Ridiculous yesterday. I think the Rams look ridiculous. They do, but that, Jared that, Goff is still the face of that franchise. Okay, but when he puts up 485 yards, they all say the defense won the game for them. Well, I he mean, put up 75 yards. I know, yesterday. I know. Okay, but... But in his defense, I said, and this is one critic uh, who will remain anonymous, but his point is, why do the Rams keep coming up to the line of scrimmage with one second left? And given the defense the opportunity of knowing, you know, to put the pressure on this end. So we want to hang it on Goff and not that McVay takes 38 seconds well, to, was, to send in the play? My, my point in, in Goff's defense was, it ain't all on him. You think the offense doesn't run through Sean McVay. And then, and then his point was, oh, you're in the huddle. And then they cut off the, the communication. I said, I said, okay. I said, but the bottom line is... It's coming from the sidelines, this, that, and the other thing. Here's my point about Goff. Because I'm gonna... I am getting very nervous about Jared Goff. Okay. And I, I, I I'm kind of torn here. I think the kid's a good quarterback, but the eye test and the start of the season up till now, and I don't get me wrong, he's thrown a hundred prior to yesterday. He yeah. threw 120 passes in two weeks. Gurley's hurt. I get all that. Rams just not playing well. I liked the Rams yesterday. I thought they were going to bounce back. So then that just translates to the San Francisco 49ers. They played great, and now they're 6-0. and What are your thoughts? And how about this kid This kid Kittle, the tight end? Yeah, he had I a mean, good year last year. He's not, he's not a sleeper anymore. He had 103 yards catching yesterday. Good weapon for Garoppolo. If Garoppolo stays healthy... You know, you, absolutely. And this kid, Breida, ran the fastest down the field. Is he, He's the fastest guy in the league? Oh, well, apparently. Apparently. <laughs> but the 49ers defense has been playing well. Uh, <laughs> Nick Bosa, listen, you know, everybody talked about oh. this guy being, a, a, you know, a, a reach. I, I didn't think he was a reach. I kind of thought he was a reach, but after the, the early start of the season, I think he's a pretty good ball and player. He's solidifying the end there, and they he's got the his brother from the, the Kansas City uh, Chiefs, who yeah. we talked about. Uh, All right, listen, the Niners I, are, you know, I just thrown it out there. The six and zero are they for real? I don't know. I'm starting to buy some Niner stock here. How about you? Well, listen, you know, until we get past game eight. It's wide open, you know, and they're not going to be undefeated in, in three more weeks or whatever it is. So, but we beat that to death. But what's, and you and I just talked about this before, that what's, who's the kind of the biggest disappointment early in the season in the NFL? 
And I think we talked about it. The Falcons. Yeah, well. Right? They got a great quarterback. They got great wide receivers. They got a great running back. And they don't win games. And they have a head coach who's a defensive guy, Dan Quinn. I'm glad you brought that up because I was about to segue to them. Okay. The Falcons go out to the desert against, you know, the Arizona Cardinals, Kyler Murray. Which was crazy. If you would play that game, you would, you have no idea how that game was going to play. I took right? the Falcons. I said, the Falcons, this is a <laughs> must win, to your point. That's what Julio I thought. They got Julio Jones. They got Calvin Ridley. Yep. They got Devontae Freeman. They got Matt Ryan. Right? The defense, is, is it that bad? Well, apparently it is. So, Matt Ryan throws for 340, I believe, and four touchdowns. Mm. Right? And... Matt Bryant misses an extra point. The game, what was it, 34, 33, something like that. But the Falcons are... The Fal- reeling. The reeling. Falcons are probably, I would say, the most disappointing team right now. And I would say the Dan Quinn watch has to be on in Atlanta. That has to be. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not disputing that. They flip coaches all the time, though. I mean, yeah, but you know. Quinn's been there. Takes them to, you know... They gave him four years. I took him to the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. Okay, but ever since that Matt Ryan sack in that in the Super Bowl against the Patriots, where they were up big and everybody, you know, we all thought the Falcons were going to win it. <laughs> things did. haven't been going well yeah. in uh, Atlanta. So, well, to your point, I would say the Atlanta Falcons are right up there with one of the most disappointing teams in the NFL. I can I can't think of anybody else that that, that, that would. Though another game I wanted to talk to you about was the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, they're home against the Houston Texans. The chefs, right? Right. And Pat Mahomes, obviously... uh, We love him. He's uh, he's uh, awesome, you know. A season for the ages last year. Big time. But I think maybe people are starting to figure out how to play him to limit him. The guy is super talented, athletic, and all that stuff. The Chiefs are right there as well as a disappointment. Okay, so they they're you know. but they're not a disappointment. They're still going to finish with the best record in the AFC. I don't know, you know about that. that. No, the New England Patriots will fi- finish. Whatever in the top, they're, they're going to get home field advantage. Well, right the now they're not playing good football. The point but is, but it's early, Steve. It's, we we were six weeks into the season. I That's get all. It. But we're talking current There's stuff. There's ten here. games left. I'm talking eye test here. So the Colts go in last year, last week, and. You know, stick it right up their butts. I think they're going to come back down to earth at some point. Uh, but I favored the Chiefs in this game. The Texans going into Kansas City, I thought this was a lock game. I thought that uh, Tyreek Hill is back. He scores a touchdown. The Chiefs yep. were up 17-3 in this game. I know. So they're, to me, another disappointing team in the NFL. All right, but let me, let's me let just wrap up the NFL with one more team because I picked this one last night. The Chargers, and you know, I don't, uh, I don't put my chips on Philip Rivers' side of the uh, of the poker table, ever. Yeah, I took it on the chin, guys. And a me. lot of people said you're picking Pittsburgh with a third string quarterback, and I said, hey, I said it's uh, Philip Rivers on the other side of the field, and I'm sorry, I don't bet the Chargers. And there you go. Well, you look good because I took the Chargers. And the fact was, the Steelers go into the West Coast with a third-string quarterback I never heard of. His last name is Hodges. That's about what I know about him. Was it Kyle Hodges or something? It doesn't matter. We'll never... We'll never. I know. I got it. But I wanted to bring that up before we uh, signed off. Yeah, so I would throw the Chargers up there with another disappointing team. So, I know, but listen, you know, that's the whole thing about Phillip Rivers. He'll throw for 500 yards. Yeah. He's going to the Hall of Fame. Yep. His numbers are indisputable. And he won't win. And he hasn't won anything. He hasn't won both. End of segment. That's it. Listen, we're going to touch base on some college football, but I certainly, uh, this segment is sponsored by Lynch Motors of Manchester, Connecticut, and They've been, like I said, loyal to us, and hopefully our fans are loyal to them. College football. And I know you got something on your mind, you know, oh, because there were some big games, right? The, the big rivalries, oh, Oklahoma, the Texas. The Red River shootout. Florida, LSU. Yeah. I mean, just one after the other. That's SEC. Like, for the next six weeks, there's going to be marquee games great. every Saturday 
I, twice. I, I thought especially this Saturday, I, could, I couldn't wait for Saturday. Um, what a great Saturday for college football fans, right? What do you got? The Red River Shootout, Texas, Oklahoma. Hmm. What else we got? Uh, uh, Florida, LSU. Yeah, that yeah. wasn't a bad game to uh, right. start at 8, 8 p.m., yep. right? And Notre Dame, USC. But I think the biggest story I'll lead with right now is Georgia, the number two team. Losing to South Carolina. Well, they were number three, but to South Carolina. Now, listen, the spread on this game was over 20 points. It was actually about 24. And in debating this, you know, during the week, a lot of people, I think, take for granted. Oh, oh, South Carolina, and I'm not just saying it was. But it's. South the, Carolina. I know your point is it's the SEC and rivalry game. Any given Saturday. That is right? correct. The point <laughs> is South Carolina's got some pretty good athletes. They all do. Why? Because it's the SEC, right? So what's the difference between Georgia and South Carolina? Maybe three or four players, right? However, if a team is amped up and wanted to go in to Athens, Georgia, listen, South Carolina had the lead. They, they were you know, playing great. Georgia, to their credit, came back, and they lose in double overtime. But right? isn't this the bug that's been biting but Georgia? That's college the, football, man. Exactly. That's how great uh, we love college football. And, and any given Saturday, the SEC is so unbelievable. Right, so Georgia was the third-ranked team. They dropped to 10. Okay. Yeah. Um, Texas Oklahoma was a good game. Texas is back. For listen, they're back. Meaning they're not going to win the national championship. No, they're not they're even going to make the playoff. They'll be in a top tier bowl. But uh, Tom Herman, who's been, I think this is his second year now. I know, but they just lost this past week. But right? they played. My point I is, know, they just that's... played the fifth ranked team in the country, Oklahoma, and Texas looks. Good. I, no, I'm and not disputing that. Get better is my point. Texas is better. But as long as you have Oklahoma and all those teams there, that that's going to hold them back. But it was. A I mean, they they they've moved chips all in on on Sam Ellinger, and I like the kid. I've seen a couple of pieces, and but they, they they're not there yet. They're on their way back. But which Texas I agree has with been you. down since Mac Brown left. Is my point. Is I know. The fact that they were competitive, they playing good football. Texas is back, in my opinion, in a year or two, meaning they will be competing for a national championship. I need to, I need, I need to ask you this because I'm sure our fans are. What about Nebraska? Is Scott Frost the answer for this team? I think. Scott, I mean, how much rope does he get before? He gets, you know? a, he gets a ton of rope. Um, Scott Frost is a very good coach. Uh, we, I'm not disputing. I'm just asking your opinion because. They win games and they they lose games. Listen, and look, ugly. I you think know. I think what you're doing is you're comparing Nebraska right now to, to the, the Tom, Tom Osborne, Osborne era. No, I'm absolutely well, not. Well, that's but, the standard bearer of Nebraska football. But I'm not comparing them talent wise. But listen, they've had some big turnover. They've had Frank Solich, who's now at Ohio University for probably the last ten years with the Bobcats. You know who else their coach was? Bill Callahan. I know that. Okay, so I am well Nebraska enough. has been in the toilet. So Scott Frost, I think, is a good hire. He, he was at UCF and went undefeated two years ago. This is his second year. They came into Minnesota 4-2. and two. Cupcake schedule at UCF. Are they mm-hmm. back, though? No. no. It's not Nebraska uh, what we think of Nebraska. But I put stock in Scott Frost. He's obviously <coughs> got to have to have another two, three years to get the recruits. Don't get me wrong. Nobody leaves Nebraska. You Unless know, they a, ask you to leave. For, as a recruit, <laughs> right? But I think that boils down to coaching and everything else. I'm not saying he's not the right pick. I'm just wondering because they had a real tough year, and I know it was his first season, not his kids and yeah, so forth. But I think yeah. Nebraska will be back in, in about... Again, two, three And years, the only right? reason I'm bringing that up, because you and I used to set our clock. Remember Nebraska, sure. Oklahoma, Orange oh, Bowl? Yeah. I mean, only our funerals would right. have gotten in the way of us not watching There's that game. no doubt. We used to watch the Sitting Nebraska. there, taking notes, dissecting every play. We go, back, we go back to Nebraska, Oklahoma, Johnny Rogers. Like, when we were, like, young, we were, like, six or seven years old. We remember... That is like the essence of college football that we remember. I remember Anthony Davis scoring five against touchdowns. Against USC, no, that's a good segue. So, 
Another marquee game on Saturday night was USC traveling to South Bend, Indiana. Notre Dame is number 10 at that point. It was a good game. Um, you know, Notre Dame went up 17-3, 20-3. USC did not quit. They battled back. And, uh, you know, the Irish prevailed they at did. home, 30-27. to Good win for the Irish. Um, the Irish... You can't disagree. Who's up next with for, for them? Because yeah, I know they, they they got some. Well, they still got Stanford. They they got they got a, a good tough schedule. Navy probably. Well, the standard Navies, but Boston College is still on the schedule. Who gives them a tough time every every time yeah. out, no so matter my, where it is. My point is, however the chips may fall, if Notre Dame runs the table and they finish eleven and one, they played a tough schedule. They lost to a Georgia team. That was ranked, obviously, three in the country at the time. Well, my point is it's Notre Dame. I'm not saying they're going to make the top four. Let me just bring this up. But they could be very relevant in the conversation. Because it's full disclosure, Steve and I are both Notre Dame guys. But we're also Michigan, Ohio State. We're, we're fans of college football in general, right? right. And, and would appreciate teams. Yeah. But right now, do you think that Notre Dame, and like I said, that was a big win. This big win this weekend, statement game, and Brian Kelly's sounds like he's he's winning to keep his job because I thought he was he was on the hot seat a year ago. To be honest with you, I think Brian Kelly's done a great job. But do you think even if they they back into the, can they beat a Clemson, Alabama? No, no they no, can't. Flat out, no. Exactly. Why? Because we saw him against Alabama in 2015, and, and I don't see any get, reason to think it would be any different. we saw him get crushed by Clemson. Right. Why? because they got better athletes. And I'm not knocking Notre Dame. I'm just saying these power teams have speed to burn. And, and, and their they depth. Can't, they just, yeah. And depth. And, and they just depth is, up is, is, is ridiculous. But anyway, I wanted to bring that up because right. I wondered about that. And I watched Notre Dame win week after week. And, yeah. But I just don't know if they go up against the Clemson, Alabama, LSU that they, no, if they can handle. No, I'm flat it. out saying absolutely not. So the other marquee game on Saturday night at eight o'clock. I mean, you know, Saturday night to me was one of the greatest sports, you know, things of the fall. And we'll get to baseball in a moment. So you had the Yankees, Astros, you had USC, Notre Dame, and you had Florida, LSU. You talk about an SEC game here. That was a great game. Right, so but Florida, all day long there were games. Like, like just as, just so as Florida great. goes into LSU. LSU now jumps to number two in the country, beating a good Florida team. And that's another story. We talked about Dan Mullen resurrecting Florida to, to relevance. And then talking to a, pe a couple people before the game, a lot of people love Florida. I love I, Florida. I man. was all in on LSU. Why? I've actually watched some tape this week of the LSU quarterback. Joe, Joe Burrow. Burrow. Joe Burrow. Okay? I was going to bring that up, that that's why I would have taken and, Florida. And Burrow is actually a transfer from Ohio State yes, to LSU. Yes, he is. Yep. But the point I wanted to make was, I said to myself, who is this kid? I'm an ex-quarterback. You know, so I, I, you know, I like watching quarterbacks and being I played the position. But I saw Burrow on tape this week coming up to the game, making some really good throws, like real good throws. Not your standard, I mean, I, I, back shoulders here and there. His, his, his completion percent, and we're talking about an LSU quarterback. I want to make that point, right? So going into the game, I'm like, huh, I like LSU into this game. It was a battle back and forth. And the fact of the matter is, LSU prevails, right? And uh, I'm, I'm glad they you jumped from 10 to 2. I know, but I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because I was wondering that, that when that game was coming up, I go, I know LSU is unbelievable. Their defense is phenomenal. And I said, but this Burrow, and I watched him play. I know it's, now it's a year later, so I'm, I'm conceding. Maybe I underestimated this kid, you know. He's playing in some big football games. Oh, yeah. But I watched him last year against Alabama, and he got kind of schooled. And I said, okay, well, he's not ready. But now we're into a new season, and you know how college football from one year, a sophomore is more mature, you know, yep. when he becomes a junior and so forth. But good call on that Joe Burrow, because I'm still, the jury's still out. Is this guy, 
He's gonna he's gonna finish in the top five of the Heisman. There's I mean, no with the, the, those numbers he's putting up, there's you know? no question. So you know, Good watch point. LSU. I'm glad so you brought that I up. Wanted, I wanted to finish on on college football. So we talked about Nunzio Campanelli, obviously a friend of the show, and um, you know, taking over the Rutgers program, and and this is week two for him. But Rutgers goes to Indiana. Okay, obviously, this first week gets crushed by Maryland. And I'm giving him a pass here because he's trying to reinvent the culture. He benches Art Satowski, the incumbent, and goes with Johnny Langan. My point being is Rutgers goes to Indiana against the Bobby Knights. And Indiana football doesn't exactly... You resonate know, over the basketball program. It's not Bear Bryant <laughs> in the Alabama with Major Roglevy and of uh, course, you know, of course, that's on understood. And on, right? That's understood. But Rutgers, seventy-five yards in total offense, one yard passing, wind up getting beat thirty-five to nothing goose egg. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not in the slightest crushing. No, it's not side indicting side the coaching not staff. Not indicting nothing. The point is, that is some stark numbers. And sometimes it gets lost at, of the futility of Rutgers. So my but point Steve, being is, Nunzio has a major, major hill rebuilding. To climb. Hill to climb. Right. And that's all I wanted to point out, because I got a lot of Rutgers fans who I, are, I know, are questioning I, already. And I said, listen, this guy's a great coach. You got to give him time. Exactly. He's, he's, he's got to weed out. They gave Chris Ash three years. Give this guy three years, they'll be earned to be in the top, but in the to Big be, Ten. But to be fair, we have to bring up the bad with the good. Of course. That's all my point. But my point was, and I stand by this, about them being in the Big Ten, they weren't ready. That's that's major league football. Yeah. And I'm not saying Rutgers is minor league football. It's just not Big Ten Football. It's been a money play from day one until they start getting the athletes. They will be in the bottom of the Big Ten for the foreseeable future. It's as simple as that. And listen, Nunzio can get a lot of kids from Bergen County and New Jersey that, that other coaches couldn't. So that's why you got to give this kid a, a chance. We are all in on Nunzio stock. Big time. Big time. So good luck going forward, but he's got a tall task, and that's the only point I wanted to bring up. Okay. So listen, we're going to wrap up tonight with um, some Major League Baseball, and it's been pretty good, actually, right? Yeah, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll watch it. Yeah, yeah. No, but I mean, it's been real. And I got to say, I thought the Dodgers for sure were going to the World Series. I no matter to. what, and I, 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 I'll eat the bird or whatever I got to do, but... I am uh, wow. I am uh, standing in line and taking my Robitussin as Me well. Me too. Ipecac. Uh, yeah, I, I was actually, what is it, castor oil. No. <laughs> Ipecac. <laughs> castor oil. So, right, that's a little rascal. Ip Ipecac <laughs> was the honeymoon. Yeah. Anyway. So the point being is, since we broadcasted our last show, yep. the Dodgers and Nats, Listen, going back, game five to the you know, to Los Angeles, Walker Bueller's on the mound, Strasburg watching the game, Dodgers go down or uh, excuse me, the Dodgers go up three nothing early in the game, right? It looks like it's a foregone conclusion. Absolutely. So I'm cool. gonna give all the credit in the world to the Washington Nationals to win the wild card game number one and then now advance to the NLCS. Now your boy Clayton Kershaw, so, so there's questions on Dave Roberts managing the bullpen. I can't throw him under the bus. I wouldn't bring throw him in under a the future bus. Future Hall of Famer. Of course not. However, I started looking at the, the Dodgers bullpen and there were some real like major numbers of like the righty to go against <sighs> Rendon this lefty to go against Soto. Okay, sometimes percentages here, work, sometimes yeah. they don't. So mm -hmm. hear me, I'm not throwing them under the bus like all L.A. Dodger fans are. Yeah, no. Listen, you bring in Clayton Kershaw, I got no problem with that. You expect lights out. He has never given up in the regular season back-to-back -back home runs. It's uncanny now. 
So, okay. this is the second time in the playoffs he's done it. Okay. What are your thoughts about that? Well, there's been other guys that, that just produced all year long and couldn't produce in the playoffs. I don't know. Maybe he just came up against a better and a real hot Nationals team. I, I, I would have done the same thing. Dave Roberts, two World Series in a row? I would have won one, but yes, he's got no Okay, but you know, there's, there was 31 other teams that didn't get there. You know? So it was Clayton Kershaw, obviously. In what, the jinxed in the playoffs? Is that no, what we're he, saying? he's on the no. downside. I mean, have the miles caught up to him? Before the season started, you and I talked about it. I was a little concerned that he went on the DL early in the season, and we said his, his motion and all that kind of stuff seems conducive to arm trouble. But I think the guy is awesome. And I told you, the big surprising fact for me, he only has 150 major league wins compared right. to what? Verlander, who, you know, pitched last night. We'll go into that, you know. But I don't know. I would have done the same thing Dave Roberts did. And, and is, if that's what the L.A. fans are barking about, well, right, go for it. Well, here's the, the $99,000 questions, Mr. Cramden. Go ahead. It's Clayton Kershaw in the regular season, who was a Hall of Fame bar none pitcher, 150 wins aside. Then there's Clayton Kershaw in the playoffs, who is not Clayton Kershaw, the Hall of Fame regular season pitcher. Okay. So the only reason I bring that up is I can kind of say Dodger fans saying, well, why are you bringing him in? Again, I would bring in Clayton Kershaw. If I'm managing, I bring him in. Then what are they talking about? Gives, I don't it just get it. gives the gallery this second questioning crap, right? But it's my point is it's uncanny how Kershaw. He's a Cy Young Award winner in the regular season and the post game. Well, ask well, Dave the Winfield. Well, is what it's all about. Ask Dave Let's, Winfield. Ask all A Rod and all these guys about. Well, Winfield finally won a ring, but the point he is, he won a couple of rings actually. Yeah. No. Kershaw has it. Okay. But he's still, I'm just throwing it out there that those those are. I'm you know, not ready to throw him under the bus, and like I told you, I'm not a National League guy. But this guy, I think, he's not Scherzer. You know who the best pitchers in the yeah, National League are? There's I, only a couple. But I have to be fair to to, you know, what what people are talking about. So they're questioning Dave Roberts. But why would you throw him to the curb for bringing in the guy you think was going to get it done? He just didn't get it done. Because it, like the Saber Metrics guys are looking at the Dodger bullpen, go, oh, I should have brought a righty in on this because okay. he bap, bap, boop, bap. Okay, so then so, they, so fire Dave Roberts. They hire him in San Diego. He takes him to the World Series. Right, How about yeah, that? I just thrown it out there. So the point is, congratulations to the Nats for moving yep. on. So now let's get to the uh, ALDS. So the, our beloved New York Yankees, the Minnesota Twins. Right, the Minnesota Twins come in, leading the major leagues in home runs, 307. And the New York Yankees finish second with a mere 305 or 6. And for the Twins, Bupka. Right, exactly. Yeah. So the Yankees, <laughs> yeah, I think we all kind of figured that they would take care of business. Well, I didn't think they'd sweep. I, I thought it might go. I thought the Twins Four would, games. Yeah, we'll Four games. one. But the point is, congratulations, Yankees move on now. Let's get to the current thing. So, again, we talked about Saturday night, college football, great day of, of sports. And then you have the Yankees going to the Houston Astros and Masahiro Tanaka. So there was some questioning of Aaron Boone of why he flip-flop Paxton versus Tanaka. Well, I tell you what, he made the right call. Do you think there was any even decision about who to start in that game? Well, I started the, People ask me, who's going to start? I go, you start Tanaka. Well, the question was, because Paxton started game one in, in the previous Right, series. but Paxton gets, he gets question. pasted in the first inning. I'm starting yeah. Tanaka. Uh, <laughs> listen, and I'm not Thank saying you, that because, because he pitched a gem, but boy, did he pitch a gem. And, you know, and I even told people he pitched a gem, but when he sometimes when he's off, he's like Catfish Hunter, gives up three home runs yeah. in an inning, and, but he pitched a great game. But I gotta tell you, and I'm not gonna waver from this. I'm, I'm behind the scenes, behind the curtain, pulling for the Yankees. But they still gotta face Garrett Cole twice, Justin Verlander one more time, yeah. and they're an unbelievable. They just didn't hit like you know. They didn't hit game one. Well, I tell you what. And they didn't really hit game two. And you know they they won it in you know extra innings. But they're a team to beat. If the Yankees beat them, they're beating. 
the National League without question. I think it's a foregone conclusion okay. that the Yankees beat the Houston Astros. That's our World Series right here. I agree. And I don't want to get ahead of myself because it's a small <clears throat> task. And we but said it's just possible they may not beat the let, Houston Astros. Let me Astros. backtrack on, on game one. Glaber Torres, number 25. Wow. This kid, and I, I think we've talked about him on the show before, but there's few prospects out there. So when the Yankees made that trade with the Cubs, and, and, and it's probably <laughs> one of the biggest heists out there in right. recent memory. Second to the Herschel Walker trade. There are, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. You know, you hear about prospects, and they're touted, and this is a can't-miss kid, and this is a can't-miss kid. Oh, the Yankees are, are, are going to go, uh, you know. You know, get this Glaber Torres. I'd never heard of him. Nobody. Nobody did. He, he was 19. But let me tell you something. This kid is going to be a star for the New York Yankees for at least a decade. He is, I can't be more happy with this guy. And we got him for nothing. We got we, him in the, in, in the Chapman trade. And then we but, signed Chapman the next year. So now we got two guys and we gave up a, a bag of rocks. Exactly. But the Cubs, <laughs> to the Cubs' credit, they had to make the trade. They win the World Series. Of course, no. Right? You know, it was a win-win for everybody right. at the time. But I just mm -hmm. want to acknowledge what a great ball player this kid is. Class act too. Yep. Couldn't be happier for the kid. He's the next Derek Jeter as far as class with the Yankees. Yep. That being said, you know we're broadcasting tonight. Tonight is the Cardinals Nats. And the Nats are up 2 nothing, surprisingly, on the Cardinals. Yep. And the Yankees are 1-1. One, one. We just yep. talked that, you know, they lost a tough one in, in uh, 11 innings. But, you know, the elephant in the room, too, is Giancarlo Stanton. <laughs> oh, my oblique. <laughs> right. <laughs> so now this guy's out. Right, getting yeah. hurt during the national anthem again. So, you know. That drives me crazy. So the point is, uh, it, it makes the task a little bit taller now, like your your big hitter is out, meaning. So we'll yeah. see what happens. But what a great matchup for Game Three tomorrow at four o'clock. We won a hundred. We won a hundred games without him in the lineup. Luis so. Severino versus Garrett Cole tomorrow at four o'clock. That's what we all all star baseball match. fans. It's going to be a great yep. game. So. Awesome. All right, so listen, we're going to just, uh, we're going to wrap up. Uh, we just want to touch base on uh, NHL, Steve, right? Season's early. It's it's the longest season in sports, it by is. the way, so we'll get to it. But right. you right. wanted to mention this this phenom to be for well, the Rangers? Yeah, for our Ranger fans out there. Kind of know, a name our, that our, you may want to remember. Our number one draft pick, second overall, Capo Caco. Um, <laughs> Say that know. three times yeah. fast. But you know. Know, listen, the kid is a, is a, ba a baby. He comes in. Uh, the Rangers unfortunately lost to the Edmonton Oilers Saturday, but my point is... Oilers he, are going to be a good team. He got man. his first NHL goal, so congratulations to Capo Caco. And that and, Connor uh, McDavid, some player. No, so totally. Edmonton, so, and some player. Yeah, so we'll get to the NHL once it heats up a bit. Right, but uh, we just wanted to mention, let's we're going to revert back, and, and this, this is sponsored by Filippi's Bakery, this segment, uh, from Monticello, New York, and... Yeah. They've been very loyal to us, and they're very loyal to their customers. So, and actually, I had an apple pie this weekend from De Filippi's hmm. Bakery, amongst other goodies. So, uh, we highly recommend. Thank you, Carmela and De Filippi's for sponsoring our show. Hmm. If you're into Catskills, it's the place to go. It's on Broadway in Monticello, and and meaning that area. I'd like to lead with a shout out, if we could segue to that, Jim. Go ahead. So, my shout out is to Middletown High School, Middletown, New York High School, the Middies. Wow, upstate and Orange County, New York. That is correct. And they had, uh, the Middies are off to a 5-0 and start prior to Saturday. And they played their arch rival, Port Jervis. And actually, it's, it, it's a great rivalry by where the winner of that game gets a bell. So it's, you know, so they... You know, whoever wins gets the bell of source of pride, kind of like an Army Navy. Iowa, Iowa State, what is it, the Hatchet Bowl or uh, something? Yeah, the Brown Jug, <laughs> Brown, like yeah, that, yeah, you know, yeah. so that type of thing. So yeah. the Middies have, have been on on the downside for a, a little while, but this year they're off to a 6-0 and start. So Middletown kicked the crap out of Port Jervis, okay. 55 and change, but really took it to them. But I want to say a shout-out to a kid that I'm very fond of. 
who is a friend of the show, the mother, Christine, Brian Giacchi. Brian is actually a lineman on the team, and I, I get to socialize with Brian every now and then. It is a pleasure to see a kid that has worked his ass off from a freshman to being a senior and a team leader and to lead his high school team to a 6-0 and record at this point. So I just wanted to shout out to Middletown High School, New York, Excellent. and Brian Giacchi. Go, Brian. Go, Brian. Listen, before we sign off, I just, I'm just i glad you brought up this high school football thing because there were some big, big games in New Jersey and another big game in, in Naples, Florida. One of our loyal listeners, Mike Garvey, went to see the Naples Golden Eagles win 45 nothing Against? So, well, I, I don't know who it was against, but it was in the Coconut Bowl. Oh, the Coconut Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> so Naples, like I said, we cover, and I'm going to bring this up in one ah, second. So it's going to be what, Sarasota or something? Naples. But I know, but in Naples, I'm going to assume oh, whatever. it's near Sarasota. Right. But I'm sure we'll hear from Mike and tell us. Right. But congratulations to the Naples totally Golden congratulations. Eagles. And before we sign off, of course, we would be remiss if we didn't bring up our St. Joe's Green Knights. Of course. Playing against Bergen Catholic. This was the marquee game in New Jersey. It's the number one versus number two team. Uh, you're right. And it was at Bergen Catholic, and St. Joe's came through with a 28-10 to 10 victory. They took care of business. They sure did. And there's no rest for the weary because there was some other games, St. Peter's and Don Bosco. And, again, these are, these are top four teams in New Jersey as well. Right. So St. Joe's has to play Don Bosco. Yep. This week. This weekend in, in uh, Montreal, New Jersey. Yeah. And then they got St. Peter. There is no resting. This is SEC of high school football. It was certainly. Congratulations right. to our Green Knights for a well-deserved victory. Yep, and we shout out to you, Coach. Coach Ogie Hoffman, you're doing a great job. And uh, Alan Gavin, of course, the running backs coach. Yep. Former teammate of ours. Absolutely. Uh, Giggs used to protect me when I used to drop back the pass. I can't thank <laughs> you enough, Giggs, after all these years. <laughs> we'll protect you from here on in. How about that? Giggs, Giggs, let me protect you now, okay? Let me return the favor. All right, guys. But listen, thanks for joining us. we got a lot of stuff coming up next week. You know, in the next two weeks, the Breeders' Cup's coming. Yep. We'll bring some stuff up on that. But baseball's in full swing, playoffs. So, you know. Football's under ways college football is a lot going on it's the most wonderful time get out there and go see a local high school football game you'll you'll enjoy it great it's only a couple hours and you'll enjoy it so. absolutely so. but thanks for joining us folks and and we'll catch up to you steve yeah. thanks hey well l listen folks too uh we appreciate you listening if you have any comments any questions any feedback please send us an email at sports with mono m-o-n-o and mono, right? Yep. Dot com or at gmail dot com. Gmail. And also, I want to thank some of the listeners from Mitch's show at Pick Dogs. So go to Pick Dogs, <coughs> D A W G Z. Okay. And uh, thank you to some of the listeners from Pick Dogs that have been uh, following in Sports with Mono and Mono. So again, Sports with Mono and Mono at Gmail. Dot com. Look forward to your comments, and we'll see you again next week. And tell a friend, and you follow, and he follows, and that's a couple more guys following, and we'll be on every every week. You Thanks. Got it. Thanks, folks. Have a great week, and talk to you soon. Okay. Bye.